Welcome to this edition of Total Health with Dr. Cage, the podcast that discusses all aspects of health, consciousness, and our true potential as human beings. One of the premises I'm exploring here is that there is a great deal more going on in the world of health than the single mono subject that has dominated media coverage the past two plus years now. The health of the United States is declining rapidly. When epidemiologists examine the health of populations, some of the measures which give the best snapshot of the total overall health of a culture are things like average lifespan, infant mortality, which is all deaths prior to one year of age, childhood mortality, deaths before five years of age, and maternal deaths during childbirth. Others that I'm looking into and researching right now include fertility rate and the rate of miscarriages, both of which are also getting far worse. What these data tell us are that health in the U.S. is getting worse. For all these measures, the United States ranks lower than 30th in the world, and in several we now rank below 40th. We have been officially labeled the worst health among all the so-called developed countries in the world. There are even many of the supposedly third world countries who only have that designation, by the way, because on average, they are less technologically advanced and don't have their own nuclear weapons or aircraft carriers, for example. A number of these third world countries have higher overall health than we do. Ironically, we appear to spend more money on health care than any other nation. I say appear because while we spend more than 20% of our gross domestic product on health care, we really aren't spending that money on health. That money is being spent on disease care. In other words, most medical treatments are aimed at suppressing or controlling symptoms, but not fixing the original cause of those symptoms. What this has the effect of accomplishment, of accomplishing, is making you a lifelong customer of the conventional medical system and the pharmaceutical drugs that are the primary form of treatment in the modern medical system. All this information I've briefly presented so far in this podcast is covered in great detail in my book, Heal Your Life, Heal the World. For more thorough presentations, please read the book. What I would like to discuss today is this idea of root causes. In all my years in the natural health professions, I can tell you that the number one root cause of most illness, especially all the chronic diseases that get most of the attention, things like heart disease and all its forms, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, and many others. Out of all these, the number one category of root causes is nutrition. Now, by nutrition, I'm talking about a lot of interrelated aspects of this subject. One is food quality. Another is specific nutrients. I have podcasts coming up on these two areas in just the next two or three podcasts. Today, I'm going to very specifically talk about just one aspect of nutrients, which is the absolute need and requirement for supplementation of the essential nutrients. This is very clinked with the rapid rise in the chronic diseases. All the essential nutrients are molecules which we must have for optimal health, for the normal functioning of the human body, and which our bodies are incapable of making on their own. If we withhold a single essential nutrient, either deliberately or inadvertently, we will develop a disease. That disease can appear suddenly or slowly, but it is guaranteed to appear. One example of this is iodine and goiters. Goiter is the name given for an enlarged thyroid gland. 
in severe cases of goiter, the thyroid gland, which sits in the front of our throat, can enlarge so much it will protrude beyond the chin of someone afflicted. The root cause of goiter is iodine deficiency. When the population of European settlers began moving into the region of North America known today as the Upper Midwest, goiters began to be common. As a public health issue, this was solved by adding iodine to salt, another essential nutrient that most people consumed regularly. As a result, the goiter problem largely disappeared. Now, what has always been interesting to me is that Native Americans living in what we European descendants call the Upper Midwest didn't seem to have the same iodine deficient problem with goiters. It seems the natives, the Native Americans living in that region were smart enough to be trading up and down the chain of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River and had tamed enough seafood products or sea salt they didn't experience that same iodine deficiency. American settlers, however, tended to grow their own food locally and not eat much else. The soils in this region are naturally low in iodine content and as a result, so was their food. The root cause of goiter was and is iodine deficiency, nothing else. Then and now, you can try any other drug or surgery you want, but they will not heal a goiter. The only thing that can is iodine. When you give someone with goiter iodine, they will gradually begin to get well over a period of months or perhaps more, depending on the size of the goiter and how long they've been deficient. The thyroid gland will return to its normal size and function. Iodine treated the root cause. Another such example of single nutrient deficiency disease is scurvy. This is a condition that was much more prevalent up until the late 1700s. Scurvy causes the body's connective tissue to lose the ability to repair itself. This tends to occur first in the gums. Bleeding gums is an early sign of scurvy. In advanced cases, people lose the ability to make, contact, to make the connective tissue in the walls of blood vessels, and then it becomes a race as to whether or not someone dies of blood loss or infections that develop in the tissues that break down and are bleeding. There is no drug the pharmaceutical industry can ever make that will cure scurvy. The only thing that can is vitamin C. This was shown back in the mid 1700s when British naval surgeon James Lynn conducted and later published what amounts to the very first placebo controlled study. It's certainly the earliest study I've ever heard of. What he did was divide the crew of the ship he served on into two groups. One ate the traditional sailor's diet of hardtack, unleavened bread crackers, and salted beef. The other group received different fruits in addition. Long before the scheduled voyage was over, 100% of the control group, the hard tack and salt beef group, had scurvy. 100% of the group eating citrus did not. He essentially ended the study at that point. Everyone started eating citrus, and 100% of those who had developed scurvy recovered. Sadly, it took 40 years from the mid 1750s to the mid 1790s for the British Navy to decide that everyone at sea needed to be eating citrus. During that 40 year gap, thousands of people per year died of scurvy in the British Navy. Limes would prove to be the best at being stored for long term without refrigeration, and as a result, British sailors became known as limeys. Every time I tell the story while teaching nutrition, though, I can't help but wonder what might have been different if the decision makers had acted on the information in the 1750s when it was first published. As with goiter, 
the root cause of scurvy was a single nutrient deficiency. Well, it wouldn't be until the 1930s that the details of the nutrient vitamin C were finally discovered, a discovery that won a Nobel Prize in medicine, by the way. The cure, the knowledge of a cure for scurvy was right there on the shelf in plain sight. The only thing that is capable of curing scurvy was a nutrient. Now, fast forward to modern times here in the 21st century, and we know there are approximately 75 to 80 essential nutrients for humans. There's a bit of a disagreement among scientists over the details on a few of them. Water, for instance, is not considered an essential nutrient, but withholding water from people will cause them to die from dehydration. So water actually meets the requirements of an essential nutrient which is something we must have for life and can't make in our bodies. Every one of these 75 to 80 essential nutrients has a disease, a deficiency disease associated with it. Some are fatal. Others may just lead to a lowered quality of life, degraded organ functions, and so on. Eventually, even the deficiency diseases that are now slow acting can prove fatal. It's actually hard to distinguish some of these because it's extremely rare for someone to be deficient in only one nutrient. This leads us to our next subject in the field of root causes and nutrients. The question becomes, can we get everything we need in the food we eat or should we be taking vitamin supplements? A long time mantra of the conventional medical world government agencies such as the FDA and pharmaceutical companies has been, you get everything you need in a balanced diet so there's no need to be taking vitamin supplements. One of the things that I am duty bound to tell you is that that statement is patently false. I'll be going into all the reasons why that's true over the next couple of podcasts, but the very short answer is we destroyed our farming soils in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, so there's not enough minerals in the soils that plants can't make the vitamins we require without minerals. In order to be healthy, we absolutely must be taking nutrient supplements. I decided to move this subject ahead of my other, the other two nutrition podcasts I have planned, um, so it's a little out of order, but I did this because last weekend I taught an online class on immune systems, and this question was asked. Also, in just the past week or two, I've been asked this same question two or three other times by various people. Clearly, there's a need for this information to be shared again. Like me and everyone else, these stories that doctors tell us that nutritional supplements are a waste of time and money and only give you expensive urine. This, this is common. This, this was a rumor. This is so untrue. This podcast is very specifically an attempt to dispel these myths and rumors coming out of the world of conventional medicine and propagated regularly by the mainstream media. So why would you believe me that you do need to be taking nutritional supplements and not the world's largest conventional institutions which state otherwise? Well, first of all, I have more training in nutrition than any of those drug company researchers and mainstream medical doctors. On average, the MDs of the world get less than 10 hours of nutritional training in medical school. I and all the other naturopathic physicians you might encounter receive more than 400 hours. That is a big difference. Second, I'm far from the lone voice in the world extolling the virtues of supplementing your diet with extra vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, and amino acids. This has been going on since at least the 1930s when the full impact of the destruction of our farming soils came to light. Naturopaths, chiropractors, oriental medical practitioners, as well as clinical nutritionists all will tell you the same thing. You cannot be healthy unless you supplement whatever food you eat with extra nutrients. My next comment on this subject of supplementation 
is the quality of the supplements you buy. Every naturopathic physician and nutritionist I know has their favorite brands. When I was in practice and working with clients every day, I certainly did. There are hundreds of nutritional companies out there and more are appearing every year. How do you know which ones to use? I can't even begin to imagine how many times I was asked that question in clinical practice. Many thousands at least. So rather than naming specific products from specific companies, which is an impossible tax to keep up with really, I developed a simple solution for teaching people about three different major grades of nutritional supplements. The first grade I called gas station or supermarket grade. The second is conventional drugstore grade. And the third is professional high-end health food store grade. The way you know which grade you're buying is to look around at where you are when you pick up the product off the shelf. If you're in a gas station or convenience store, a supermarket, or even a conventional drugstore, it is probably not the highest quality nutritional supplement you can buy. I qualify that with the term probably because I'm aware of a few stores, some of the big box stores, for instance, that have a conventional drugstore built in and also have a reasonably well-stocked supplement section that does contain some higher quality brands. If you're fortunate enough to have local access to one of these stores, sure, by all means, take advantage of that fact and use it. Otherwise, shop at the high-end health food stores slash nutritional supplement stores and get high-quality brands. You might ask the clerks, which brand you sell the most of for whatever product you're looking for? It will most likely be the lowest cost one, which doesn't always mean lower quality. Some of the high-end brands actually spend a great deal on advertising, so their prices will tend to be higher. Another question to ask is, which brand has the fewest customer complaints or returns? None of these screening questions is foolproof, but at least they make a start. In general, if you're shopping at a high-end health food supplement store, including an online version of these, anything you'll get will probably be better than that at the lower end retailers. In my upcoming podcast on nutrition, I will delve into exactly which nutrients you need, dosage requirements, and so forth. A lot more detail. Right now, however, I feel there was a strong need to get this answer out there. And here it is. Yes, you must be taking nutritional supplements of all the essential nutrients. A simple start is to get a high-quality multivitamin slash multimineral extra vitamin C and extra iodine. There's almost never enough of these two in multivitamins. And a supplement of omega-3 fatty acids. Start there while you wait for my next nutrition podcasts. I also have several of my lengthy core nutrition webinars that are available to members of my online health community. Links for all of this can be found on my main website, which is www.drcagesays.org. That's D R C A G E S A Y S dot O R G. While you're there, take a look at all the classes, my books, and other offerings I have, all aimed at helping you achieve the highest levels of health and consciousness possible. That's where you can find the links to describe my book, Heal Your Life, Heal the World, and a link to go purchase it. My brand new book, Keep Your Gallbladder, second edition, there's also a link there for that. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Dr. Cage saying good health.